40 days kingdom of God. So we had uh, uh, 90, uh, no, no, 39 days right now, and today is day number 40. We are again here, like yeah. yesterday, we, uh, Maria, Amen. we are sitting here together in your living room. And yesterday you told that um, one uh. key for the kingdom of God is also like Jesus. He just do what he saw in heaven. He just spoke what he hear in heaven. But how is this possible? How is it possible that we can hear the voice of Jesus, the voice of God? How do you hear the voice of God? I think many people are now watching and said, yeah, I also want to build the kingdom of God like, like Maria. But how is it possible for me to hear the voice of God? So this is very important. Can you please open your heart a little bit for the people who are watching now, for the people who are listening now, how do you hear the, the voice of God? Yes, Pastor. Daniel gave me again a question that is not very simple to answer just in a short time, but I will try. You know, I think God is a God that communicates because he's a God of love. And when you love, you want to communicate. When you love, you want to have touch and contact. You know, um, my little uh, angel, she slept with me many years in, in a big bed, and sometimes in the night she would say, Mommy, where are you? I said, I'm right here, darling. She said, but I don't feel you. I said, come, give me your little foot. And I held her foot all night. I said, Lord, this child is so, yeah, I don't know what. She wants to be so close. He said, well, that's how I want you to be with me. <clears throat> uh, communication is the language of love. God is a God that communicates. God is a God that wants to hear from us. And... Uh, I had the grace to give my life to Jesus, or to to uh, to allow to find out that Jesus wants to live in me at the age of seven, and I gave him my life and I invited him to come and be my life, and uh, and then every day I had the deep deep longing to go into a church and I talk to my father, my heavenly father. I think it's a, a special favor that God gave me that immediately after receiving Christ, I found the Father in heaven. Because Jesus came to lead us to the Father. And, and until we arrive at the Father, we have a, an orphan mentality. And God wants us to live as children of the King of Kings. So soon after, I had this wonderful experience of knowing that Jesus Christ is now living in this little body of mine. Uh, my brother, who was three years younger than me, he was five years old, I was eight, had a ruptured appendix. And in such an advanced stage that the doctors did not give my, my parents any hope anymore. And he was, of course, that dream, the boy that they expected for so long. And so um, I, I, walk, I went into my bedroom because I saw my crying parents and I didn't want them to be so sad. And I went on my knees and I cried, Father in heaven, please heal my brother, Kurt. And you know, it was seconds that I was in a, in a, in light. All of me around me was light, coming straight from heaven. And I knew God had answered my prayer. I went to my parents, I said, don't cry, don't cry, Kurt is going to leave. And they thought, I just couldn't take the thought of losing my brother. And that's why I was talking to them like this. But I said, no, 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 no. Jesus is going to heal him. Well, he got healed. He even became a doctor. He's still alive today. So, you know, that was a very, very deep encounter with God that hears our cries. And uh, I want to encourage you in your free time, read uh, in the book of De De Deuteronomy, the chapter 28, the whole chapter. It's about blessings and curses. And I just read now the first verse. <clears throat> and, it shall, and it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come to, do, to you and overtake you, 
and you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. And then come the blessings until verse, let me see, uh, verse 14. And then in verse 15, also, it says, but it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses come upon you and overtake you. Now from verse in Deuteronomy 28, verse 16, to verse uh, 68 are curses, many more curses. So God wants us to listen to him. He wants us to do what he says. I already told you before that when I came to Uganda, I only knew that God wanted me to come as a blessing. And after a few days, I realized, where do you start and where do you end? I just wanted to go back to Europe again because I couldn't imagine with all the needs that I was facing that I could move anything. And then God said to me, you are not Maria, you are not the savior of Uganda. Well, it made me feel this big with hat. And I said, what do I do then? He said, only every day what I show you. So that's what I've been doing now. The last 25 years, I have done every day what God has shown me and uh, what he has spoken to me. And the outcome is a holy shock. I am totally surprised myself what he can do when we obey. You know, it says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. In John 10, 24 to 27, the Jews gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So, you know, it's a matter of intimacy. My mother could have called me in the middle of the night and just said my name. I would have known this is my mom because of the intimate relationship we have. I could have said, I could have called my mama and just said, Mama, and she would have known it's me because of the intimacy we had with each other. So people that are intimate, they hear each other and they want to hear each other and they love to speak to each other, to communicate. Now, in John 10, uh, 14, 26, we read, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. I experienced that. God teaches us all things. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. Mark 13, 31, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Uh, <clears throat> when I really had them, this um, being set free from religion and come into a total living faith, before that I had many years of a mixture. Um, I knew the word of God was the most important message in my life. So I read the whole Bible on tapes. In those days we didn't have CDs yet. And I, all day long, day and night, I had the Word of God running my house. And in the night even, I had it next to my bed. And when one tape got off, I woke up and I pressed it again. And I slept like a baby hearing the Word of God. I wanted the Word to go into my subconscious and unconscious. Because it's through the Word that our ears are opened to hear from God. So, uh, you know, but most people want to serve God in an advisory sort of way, they tell him what he should do. You know, God doesn't need advisors. God needs people that are at his disposal, ready to do what he wants them to do. He's the king. You know, the kingdom of God is no democracy. In a democracy, we tell what we want. In a kingship, the king tells what he wants from his children. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sad because I've heard 
in Europe, in some kindergartens, the ch their children say in the morning, teacher, do we have to do again today what we want? I don't think that is helpful for the children, and I don't think it's pleasing God. Yeah, as a bird speaks in a small, still voice, seldom you can hear it acoustically, yet it is firm, definite, and persistent. Uh, two that love each other, they are in communication all day long. It's communion. Even when they're distant from each other, there is communion in communicating with each other. And God, who wants to be our very first love, that is his goal in our lives. And when, God, when you love God first, you will see all the other things will fall in place. So as a God speaks through nature, very loud, in Psalm 19, 1 to 3, the heavens declare the glory of God. The, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. You know, the, the heavens declare the glory of God. I do believe the first Bible that ever was written by God were the stars. And I do believe that Abraham and, and Jacob and Moses, they were there, they were reading the Bible in the skies. They were reading God's plans for them. And, uh, and you know, this is not as, uh, uh, astrology, that's astronomy. And God, even today, speaks in his stars. But he also speaks very loud through his word, through the Bible. So when you want to sharpen your ears for the word of God, then start reading the Bible loud to yourself. And you will see, all of a sudden, one, one verse starts to, 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 to get a life on the Bible, on the, on the page. And that's the word God wants to speak to you. Uh, I want to tell you about a very uh, interesting situation in our family. Um, one day I realized there's something going on in the family that I'm not informed about. There were a lot of ch 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 I said, what's going on? And my brother, uh, brother and sister said, well, it's not for you. Well, it was about the testimony of my parents. They decided to make a testimony before they died and wanted to share it with us before they died. So I didn't know what was in that testimony. But I went to the Lord and said, Lord, uh, the only real thing is a big house which I spent a lot of years building it with my parents. Uh, how do you see the situation? How, how, what will, will be the, the, the testament today? And he gave me Psalm 45, 11. It says, now listen, daughter. How often does it say daughter in the Bible? It's always sons. Now listen, daughter, don't miss a word. Forget your country, put your home behind you. So that was clear that I would not get the house, although I was very attached to it. But then he also says, you need to continue uh, reading that God will be very pleased, that God is very pleased that he has given me much more than what I ever could have inherited from home. Uh, and, and I did that, and that, it was such a release to me when I found out uh, the family was together, they read the, the testament for me, all the others knew it already, and they were very shocked about my response. I said, it's fine, it's fine. And they couldn't believe that I could accept it with such peace. But my Father in heaven informed me to let, uh, it's, he said, don't miss a word. Forget your country, put your home behind. Amen. And I did it and my peace was totally stable. God speaks through our minds. It says in 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, God can also write very, very beautiful on crooked lines. God is not a God that is ever taken by surprise. God is not a, a God that is ever shocked. He knows the end from the beginning. And so we can trust our God and release everything in his hands, no matter how weird the situation looks. Look at the Israelites when they were standing in front of the Red Sea. Behind them, 
the army of Egyptians. So this was a place of no win, but not for God. God told Moses, touch this Red Sea with that uh, stick that you have. And in that stick was already the power of God because it was no longer the identity of Moses to be a shepherd, but he had given up that identity. He knew he was a representative of God. He touched the Red Sea and all the Israelites walked on dry ground, which to me is the greatest miracle, to the, to the desert, to the other side. And when the last Israelites was out of the sea and the last Egyptian was in the Red Sea, the whole thing collapsed. And it is proven historically that from that day on, the Egyptian military power was broken. So, you know, for God, nothing is a problem. I want to read you a story that God makes no mistakes. It's, it's a story that I really love. Uh, no, I don't think I have it here, but I can tell you. There was a king, and he had a very close servant, and that servant always told the king, King, God is always good. So, one day they went for a hunt, and a wild animal attacked the king, and bit off his little finger. The servant fought that animal and saved the life of the king, but he could not prevent that he lost one finger. So the king said, what? You think God is good? He said, your majesty, I want to confirm, God is always good and he knows why he allows certain things. And the king was enraged with this answer. He threw this servant into prison and he didn't want to see him again. After a while he went on another hunt and he was attacked by cannibals and he was already on their altar to be sacrificed when they discovered he was missing one finger. They immediately released him and let him go. The king was overwhelmed with this miracle in his life that the missing finger saved him his life. So when he came back to the, to, the, uh, to the castle, he released that servant immediately from prison. And he said, my dear servant, God is really good. He saved my life today because of this missing figure. And you were right. But now tell me, why would God allow, if he's so good that I put you to prison? And the servant said, your majesty, if I had been with you on that hunt, they would have sacrificed, sacrificed me because I'm not a missing figure. That's why he kept me in prison until this danger is over. God is always good and he makes no mistakes. And I think the king from then on understood the words of his servant. Dear ones, no matter what is happening in our lives, God is good. And he will never, never allow more than he gives us grace to cope with it. Then God speaks through our dreams and visions. It says in Acts 2, 17 to 18, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. Yeah, I have, we have you know, in Africa many people have dreams and visions. And it's interesting that he says, you know, that sons and daughters, we need to belong to the king of kings. And we are not through the natural birth, children of the king, but through our spiritual birth. When we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, then we have the right to be the children of God. And young men will see visions, old men will have dreams. Hallelujah. So now you know. If you see visions, you are a young man. If you have dreams, you are an old man. Now, God speaks through prophetic words. In 1 Corinthians 12, 10, he gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. So, unfortunately, I believe that in the body of Christ, the gift of prophetic utterances has been not as well developed as many other giftings. And I think it's very important that we start now as we enter into the kingdom of God, living, that we have prophetic schools in all, our, uh, in all our areas, you know, because it's very important to hear from God 
and to be God wants to communicate and and uh, that is for every believer God speaks through our desires in Romans 8 5 those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit yeah also <clears throat> The Lord says in, uh, in, in Psalms, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So have your joy in God and you can know that the desires that he gives in your heart that you release are from him. Then God speaks a lot of times through our inner witness, through peace. In John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And I think that is especially important for our days, that we are not allowing a spirit of fear to dismantle our lives, to destroy our confidence in God. Amen. Uh, in, in Isaiah 50, 59, 1 and 2, we lead, read, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that you will not hear. So when you don't hear from God, say, Lord, where I have I missed your last order? Where did I not obey your ways? And you will see God will speak to you. And then repent. That means change your way of thinking. And think the way God wants you to think according to his truth. So dear ones, God is a speaking God. He's a loving God. He wants to really communicate with you all day long. He wants to tell you how much he loves you, how much he appreciates you, how the good plans he has for you. Trust him. Make him your first love because he's a jealous God, a very jealous God. He wants to be number one. And then all the other issues in life will fall in the right place. And you will see, you will go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And the Lord will even teach you how to sing worship, how to sing praises in the night, because the joy comes in the morning. I pray that, the, that you are entering this adventure to hear from God and to do what he says. Many times I've said already, Lord, I don't understand it, I don't like it, but you give me peace and joy now, I will do what you say. The rest is your problem. Fight for your, for your um, um, reputation. Mine is already gone. Fight for your reputation. And God has done it every time. And don't refuse to listen to the rebuke of God. Whom God loves, he rebukes and even chastises. But receive it with thanksgiving. God doesn't want us to go astray and to go and end up in disaster. I trust that you are receiving that heart of confidence to trust in the words of your God because he has already proven his love for you by sacrificing his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and me on the cross, to pay the price, the penalty, that would pay us out of the kingdom of darkness, that would release us from the hands of the enemy and bring us back into the home of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, as his beloved children, as his beloved representatives, and, and uh, ambassadors here on earth. Shalom, shalom. Thank you very much for opening your heart. Thank you. Yes, today our, our 40 days is coming to the end. Amen. It was 40 day blessed days. Yes? Amen. Kingdom Amen. days. Amen. We want to encourage you. <coughs> you were listening so many things about the kingdom of God. 40, 40 days kingdom of God. It was a special days <coughs> and we want to encourage you. We just spoke a little bit. We, we have a little bit, you have a little bit, and we spoke it out and we broadcast it into your heart and into your ears and into your house or, or on your mobile. And um, we want to encourage you that you will seek more 
the kingdom of God. Amen. You, you, you take these this themes and you open the Bible, what we told here about the kingdom of God, and you, you, you read more and more about that. Mm -hmm. And the more you, you study yourself, and you look to the word of God, the more the Holy Spirit will reveal in your heart. Amen. And I believe the more knowledge you have about the kingdom of God, the more an, an attitude will be in your life to think like the kingdom of God, to speak like the kingdom of God. And the, the more you will have this kingdom mindset, the more your life will be changed, the more Amen. your family will be changed, the Amen. more your business will be changed, mm -hmm. and the more your, your church will be uh, changed. So I want to encourage you that you think like kingdom of God, that you speak like kingdom of God, and that you live like in the kingdom of God mindset. This is what Jesus came for, and he touched about 40 days before he went to heaven. And so I want to encourage you, before you went to heaven, build the kingdom of God, as Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all what you need will be added to you. Mm -hmm. And never forget, you're highly favored, deeply loved, and you are blessed all supernaturally. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.